Hello candidates, Mr. Gorova once again taking you through another session. This time we're looking at analysts and we're saying teacher Jen looked at the other the conditional sentences that is if one, if two and if three. So we're saying we're now looking at yet another conditional which is unless. We're saying just like if unless is also a condition. The only difference is for which it is a negative conditional. In the other aspects we are looking at, if a certain condition is fulfilled, a result comes true. Like, if I get money, I'll buy a car. Which means the moment I get the money, I'll buy the car. Now, in this time, we are putting a negative condition. So we are saying, it means if not, all of us know that not represents a negative in these statements. And we're saying, for example, in spoken English, it can also be called acceptive for those who like using in a way of sounding English. We use except if to represent unless. So I would say, unless I do this, you can also say, except if I do this, such and such a thing will happen. We're also saying, as part of the, the points to note, it is also not ideal to use not in the same clause with unless. So you just take it that once a clause holds unless, you cannot use not in the same clause. We're also saying unless can be used both at the beginning and in the middle. This is true. All of us know this. Just like if we use them both at the beginning and in the middle. And we're also saying if and unless, since all of them are conditionals, if and unless can't be used in the same sentence. So if a sentence has if, so if we change it to using unless, then if cannot come back in that same sentence. So a sentence of unless uses unless alone. A sentence of if uses if alone. For example, we're saying if she revises her notes, she will pass the paper. And we're saying if we begin with unless, we shall say, unless she revises her notes, she will pass the paper. A candidate may ask, how do you arrive at this note? We're saying the first first way of phrasing this can be using this spoken mode of except if. If she revises her notes, she will pass the paper. If you use except if, what does it become? Except if she revises her notes, then you've already put a negative condition. Except if she revises her notes, she will not pass the paper. So that's why we say, unless she revises her notes, she will not pass the paper. So for all of us who like making sentences using a spoken mode, a way of sounding the sentence through, and you see whether it makes sense, this meaning of except if will help you much more. If she revises her notes, she will pass the paper. Except if, that is already a representation of unless. So we, we continue to using it in the middle. She will not pass the paper unless she revises her notes. So the same sounding will help you. She will not pass the paper except if she revises her notes. Which means if she doesn't revise these notes, she will not pass the paper. So we go ahead to break down these positivity and negativity into clauses. What happens if a certain clause is positive? What happens if a certain clause is negative? We're saying we're looking at both clauses negative. All of us remember that we have the if clause and the main clause that is in the if conditionals. When we come to the unless, we have the clause that has unless is the unless clause. Then the other bit is the main clause. So we're saying if both the unless clause, I mean if both the if clause and the main clause are positive, what happens? We're saying here the negative comes in the main clause. Remember we said we don't put a negative in the same clause with unless. So we're saying, for example, if she completes her work, she will watch cartoons. Both clauses don't have any negative. And we're saying the negativity will come in the main clause. So this will be, 
unless she completes her work, she will not watch cartoons. Unless she completes her work, she will not watch cartoons. You see the note coming, like we said, the negativity will now come in the main clause. So the note comes in the main clause. We look at it in the middle now, we say, she will not watch cartoons unless she completes her work. So we can take ourselves through other examples of having both sentence, both clauses, positive. And you make the same results like these ones. So when we go ahead and look at both clauses negative, here we mean in the if clause there is a note somewhere, like we see it here. In the main clause there is also a note. So there is a negativity in the if clause, there is another negativity in the main clause. So we are saying, here, where the negatives are in both clauses, the negative comes in the main clause now. It doesn't disappear. It still comes back in the main clause. So we are saying, if Tom does not hand in his book, it will not be marked. If Tom does not hand in his book, it will not be marked. So we are saying, one negative will remain, which will be, unless Tom hands in his book, it will not be marked. There is a negative that will remain. Unless Tom hands in his book, it will not be marked. Tom's book, this is now using unless in the middle, Tom's book will not be marked unless he hands it in. All of us remember that here, it, is, it will not be marked the book. Now, when we are beginning, we can't begin with it. We begin with the subject itself. Whose book was it? Tom's. So how do we say? Tom's book will not be marked unless he hands it in. We we'll look at example two. If Jessica does not pay money, she will not attend the concert. And we are saying, if we begin with unless, we shall say, unless Jessica pays money, she will not attend the concert. Unless Jessica pays money, she will not attend the concert. So for all of us who are viewing, you can help us get the response on when we use unless in the middle here. Yes, all of us have thought about it and we shall say, Jessica will not attend the concert unless she pays money. So we shall continue with unless in the next lesson so that we finish it up and we do the activity in our workbook on page 72 and 73. Thank you for watching.